Welcome back, guys. This is part two of Do You Trust God? So uh, tonight, I don't have Little Man with me. I don't have Solomon. He is actually in the room taking a nap. But tonight, we're going to pick up from where we left off last time. So in the event that you missed the video, that you didn't catch part one, maybe you just didn't finish it, maybe you weren't able to, you got busy, I get it, life gets in the way. Just to kind of go back on a few points that we did touch up on, um, we talked about Abraham and when God told him to go to the land of Canaan, um, Abraham probably didn't expect the land that God told him to go to for there to be a famine. Um, but part of trusting God means that even if, when there's a family, you're going to stay put because God didn't put you there to suffer. God didn't put you there to struggle. Um, but as you can see in the story, Abraham actually left the land of Canaan to go to Egypt because of the famine. And uh, as a result, uh, his lack of faith led him to leave his place of worship because he built the first altar in, Can in Canaan. Um, it led him to lie to Pharaoh. Uh, it led Pharaoh to rebuking Abraham. Um, and just basically Abraham lied while he was in Egypt because he thought it would be protecting him. But how many of us know that sin is actually never good? There's never any good that comes out of sinning. Um, a lie is eventually going to hurt someone, if not hurt yourself, uh, just whatever it may be. So in this case, being disobedient, um, because Abraham didn't quite trust God when the famine was going on in the land of Canaan. Uh, but we also saw a shift that took place with Abraham um, when it came to him and Lot quarreling. Um, if you remember Abraham and Lot, they had, a, they had a lot of land, had a lot of servants, had a lot of sheep, cattle, all of those things, a lot of possessions basically. Um, and they began to argue. And as a result, Abraham was like, hey, this arguing, it, it's, it's not even that serious. How about I give you, if you want the right part of the land, I, I'll take the left. If you want the left, I'll take the right, vice versa. Um, and that's that's one story when we just began to see uh, when Abraham really started to trust in God. So tonight, I really want to pick up from a point that I wasn't able to really uh, go into depth last time. Uh, for those of you that watched the entire video, you saw I was clearly busy with Solomon, got a little busy with him, fell asleep on my lap, so just kind of had to cut it just a tad bit short, got straight to the points. But now I want to go in depth with a point here and that was that was the point here there's a difference between believing in God and believing God so I want to take you all to James chapter 2 verse 19 again that is James chapter 2 verse 19 and here it reads you say you have faith for you believe that there is one God Good for you. Even the demons believe this and they tremble in terror. So you may be one who says, Cameron, what do you mean th there's a difference between believing in God and, 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 and believing God? Cameron, if I believe that God is real, what's the difference between believing in him? I believe in the fact that he is real. I believe that he is real, but that's not the context in which James was speaking here. James was saying, there are those who believe in God, including demons, and that's it. They don't want to live their lives for him. They don't want to surrender to him. They don't want to submit to him. They just simply want to say, I believe in God and go from there. They think their ticket into heaven is based on the fact of their belief in in God. They believe they're going to be blessed because of their belief in God. They believe that they're going to prosper. They believe that God is going to bring them through no matter what storm they, be go they may be going through or will go through because of their belief in God. But you won't ever truly experience God unless you believe him. What do you mean, Cameron? What do you mean unless I believe him? That means if you believe the words that God tells you, if he tells you to go north, if he tells you to go east, if he tells you to go south, if he tells you to go west, God is going to, when you believe God, when you go wherever he tells you to go, there's a promise that's going to come out of the land in which he's told you to go to. 
You must believe God. You must trust God with all of your heart, all of your mind, and everything that you do. You should always believe God. Always believe him. He's never going to mislead you. He's never going to take you through somewhere to harm you. But even in the midst of the famine, in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the drought, when people are for you, when people are against you, believe God in the promise he has for you. See, that is where Abraham, that's where Abraham became a, became a great man of faith. The fact that God told him, that Abraham, you're going to be the father of many nations. And remember, I told you all last time, Abraham was 80 plus years old before Ishmael came along. And Ishmael wasn't even the promised child, wasn't even the promised child. But when we believe God, we will, we, we will be patient. We will trust him. We won't lose hope. And it's okay. We're human. Sometimes you need that encouraging word. Sometimes you need God to encourage you. It's just like when God came to Abraham. Remember, God, there, there were basically years in between um, God speaking to Abraham the first time when he told him that he's going to be the father of many nations. And then years went by before God came back. And said, Abraham, this is what I'm going to do through you. He had to encourage Abraham. He had to even encourage Sarah. And that's what God will do for you. You may, you may go, God, I believe you. I believe the promises you have for me. I believe your word. Lord, I believe the things in which you told me. God, I trust you, but I need some encouragement. There's nothing wrong with needing encouragement. I want to encourage somebody tonight that you may be expecting a promise. You may be expecting a promotion. You may be expecting something that you've been praying for for years and years and years. And you're going, God, I believe you, God, I trust you. But today is one of those days when I'm beginning to feel a little discouraged. Today is one of those days when I'm beginning to question, is that what you really had in store for me? Is this... Was this of my own doing? Was this, is this my own feeling? Is this my own idea? Or Lord, is this truly of you? And I want to let you know, do not let go. Don't let go of the faith. Don't let go of the promise. Don't let go of your trust in God. I want to encourage somebody today to continue. And if maybe you haven't before and today will be your first day, I want to encourage you to believe God. If he tells you you're going to have children, have children. You and your husband or you and your wife, you may be going through a season where you're having a hard time conceiving. But if God gave you a promise, if he promised you one child, if he promised you two, child, two children, if he promised you three, believe God. Believe God. There may be someone here today and you may, you may be one saying, God promised me. God promised me that I'm going to have this home, that I'm going to live in this community, that he's going to bless me with these rooms, this many rooms, this many bathrooms. This, the, uh, you know, He's going to bless me with a basement. He's going to bless me with a backyard. And he's going to bless me with this and that. And God very well may have promised you those things. But because year after year after year, trial after trial after trial, these things have gone by. And now you're starting to question, Lord, is what you told me truly going to happen? You may be someone, you may be a college student watching this today. Whether you're trying to get into med school, law school, maybe you want to become a teacher. Maybe you want to become a nurse. Maybe you want to become an engineer, a scientist, a chemist, whatever it may be. You may be saying, I know that God promised me about this. I fasted and I prayed about what it is I'm supposed to do in life. I I took my time. I wasn't rushing. I even took time off in between high school and college to figure out what it is that God wants me to do in life. You may be watching this today. They may be in that predicament. And because you're going through a season, maybe you're taking a class. Maybe, maybe you're not quite understanding the material. You go, God, if I can't understand this, how do you expect me to do what you've called me to do? But I want you to know, I want you actually to believe in God. Believe in God. Don't lose hope in him. Don't lose faith in him. Don't doubt him. I want you to trust God. Believe God. 
It's so hard to believe the fact. Remember Jesus said, the last shall be first. And you may be someone watching this video right now saying, Cameron, you know what? Actually in life right now, I do feel last. Right now in life, Cameron, I do feel last. I don't have many friends. I, 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 I don't know what it is I'm called to do. I'm seeing this person have a family here. I'm seeing this person get promoted over there. I'm seeing this person achieve this and this person achieve that. But Cameron, I don't know. I just feel last right now. I feel, I feel left behind. I feel like, I feel like I don't have a purpose. But I wanna remind you today watching this, if you didn't have a purpose, if you didn't have a purpose, God would have never breathed life into you. He would have never breathed life into you. If he didn't have a plan for you, he wouldn't wake you up every day. He wouldn't get you out that bed every day. Believe God. Believe God. You may be someone who is going through a season of mourning. And you're trying to figure out, Lord... You told me you're going to be with me. You told me you're going to strengthen me. You told me you're going to walk with me through this season of grief, through this season of, of when I may feel sad, when I may feel mad. Lord, you told me you're going to bring me through. You told me you're going to be right here with me. I want you to know, believe God. Believe him in every emotion. When you're feeling mad, when you're feeling sad, when you feel happy and when you feel angry, believe God. Believe that he is the one that is with you from your very first day to your very last. Believe that he is the one who can strengthen you when you are at your weakest, but who will also humble you when you're at your highest. Believe, believe, believe God. Trust him. Trust him trust him i know right now we're hearing these stories we're hearing wall street we're hearing cnn we we're hearing all of the all of the media talk about how we may go through a, a great recession we hear about inflation we hear about russia and ukraine we hear about the violence that is going on throughout the nation we hear about the evil that is going on all throughout the world and I know that sometimes when we see these negative things, when we see these dark things, when we hear these things that we may not quite understand, it can sometimes be hard to trust God. God, how? How do you expect me to trust you? How do you expect me to lean on you when all hell seems like it's breaking loose, but that is the time we should really be leaning on, leaning on God, when we should really have our faith in Him, when we should really be fasting and praying, trusting God. I was telling a friend the other day, you should always trust God in every moment of life. Doesn't matter whether it's a high moment, a low moment, um, first, last, whatever it may be. You should always trust God, but the moments when it, when it really shows if you truly trust in him, if you truly lean on him, are those moments when you're in the valley, those moments when you've been thrown into the fire, those moments when you're going through a tribulation, going through trials. Because Jesus told us that we all will go through trials and tribulations. I know that we all know about the great tribulation and revelation, but throughout our lifetime, we all will go through trials and tribulations and I want to encourage somebody today you may be going through your tribulation you may be going through your trial and you may not have a fair trial you it, it may seem like you may not have a jury there may be demons who are attacking you from the left and from the right there may be words that are being put in your mind there may be thoughts that shouldn't be there there may there may be something going on all around you things going on all around you that just seems like what you're going through is not fair you may be going through that trial and tribulation but i want to remind you that god is with you 
Trust him. He wouldn't take you through the fire if he didn't plan on refining you. He wouldn't bring you through the fire if he didn't plan on sharpening you. He wouldn't bring you through the fire if he didn't plan on making you stronger. I want somebody to know that God is with you. He is El Adonai. He is Elohim. He is Jireh. God is with you. Trust him. Trust him. These past two videos, I know uh, my last sermon and this message, it, compared to my other ones, they may seem short, but they're straight to the point and they're just a simple message. Something that I want, I wanted to just kind of touch base on with everybody. And simply remind you to trust God, to believe him. Not only believe in him, believe him. Satan is lying to somebody today. He's lying to somebody tonight. He may be lying to you. He may be saying, you're the reason why the promises haven't been fulfilled. You're the reason why you're not experiencing the great promises of God, what God has promised you. And right now you may be someone, whether you're a man or a woman, you feel like Sarah. See, here it is. Remember, God promised Abraham and God promised Abraham that he would be the father of many nations and he told Sarah you will be a mother you will have a son and I can only imagine how she felt after she told Abraham to basically go sleep with their servant so that they may have a child and when she saw that the servant Hagar got pregnant when she saw Hagar get pregnant I can only imagine the emotions she had. I can only imagine what she was feeling on the inside. I can only imagine the lies that Satan was telling her. I want to tell somebody today. I want to encourage somebody today. You are not the problem. You're not the reason why God's promise hasn't been fulfilled. You're not the reason why what God promised you hasn't happened yet. No matter what you do, no matter the circumstances that may be thrown at you, God's promise will be fulfilled in your life. Remember, God can't lie. God won't lie. God can't break promises and he won't break promises. He can't and he won't. But there's somebody today watching this. God promised you something. And it, it seems like it's taking forever and it seems like it's too late in life. So you watch other people do what God promised you. You watch other people go after what God has promised them. And you're saying, you know what? Maybe it's not even God, it's me. Who am I? If I can't achieve this, I can't do that. It's not going to happen for me. And I want to encourage you today to get out of that Sarah mindset. Trust God. Don't trust your own wisdom. Trust God. Don't trust your own thinking. Trust God. Don't trust your own plan. Trust God. When you surrender all of that to him, everything works out for the good. So tonight I want to close this video out in, video out in prayer. I know we, we usually start each and every uh, message uh, at the beginning with prayer, but um, I believe I'm, a, you know, we should probably start closing out the videos in prayer. So I want to pray for someone tonight who is watching this, who may have a hard time trusting God, who may have a hard time believing God. You may believe in Him, you may know that He is real, but when it comes to Him saying, "Drop your staff." Meaning drop, drop the rod that you are holding so that it can turn into the snake so that people can see that he is the true one, the living God. When it comes to him saying, go to the Red Sea, I'm going to make a way for you. 
when it comes to him saying, lay your hands on someone who is sick, when it comes to him, lay your hands on someone who is possessed, when it comes, maybe to him just simply saying, step on the land in which I'm going to give you a home, which I told you this will be your home. Walk into the house. Test drive the car. Whatever it may be. God has a promise for you. So, Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight. And, Lord, there is someone who is watching this video who is having a hard time trusting you. There is someone watching this video tonight where if their earthly manager, their earthly director stood behind them and they fell back, they would trust them to catch them more than they do, more than they trust you if they were falling. But, God... Remind us, reveal to us, show us, encourage us that no matter how, how far we may fall, no matter how fast we may fall, Lord, you will catch us. Lord, help us in those times when the flames are intensifying. Help us in those times when it feels like we're drowning. Help us, oh Lord to trust you. We believe in you. We know you're real, but Heavenly Father, we want to believe you. Give us the courage. Give us the strength. Give us the boldness to step out. Not in our own will, but in your will, oh Heavenly Father. May we continue to believe you in every word that you tell us. love you and I praise you, O oh Lord. Bless my brother and sister watching this video tonight. Bless my brother and sister watching this video, Heavenly Father. In your mighty and holy name, help us trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. Believe God. Trust in him. God bless you. And I look forward to speaking with you all next time.